Hello people, Kumira fans, how are we all doing? We are here to talk about special chapters between Gold Knight 2 and The Weight of Time, which I'll be continuing on Friday, so do be sure to check that out when it drops. So, the special chapters. They were really, really good, on the whole. Wish especially, as I tweeted out um, about a week ago now. They were fantastic. I've got notes here on my phone that I will be going through to give you my thoughts on each of the uh, each of the special chapters or the special chapter mini arcs in the case of some of them. But overall, they were really good. I'm glad you recommended I read those and suggested that because, well, they were, they were just brilliant. They were just fantastic. I have no idea how Corrigan manages to do it. But let's just hop in. So, the first of the bunch was Gaze. Um, which is about Tilda and Loot. Um, it's uh, kind of a sad... It, it's kind of sad, if I'm being honest, on the whole. And the, the notes for some of these early ones are a bit bare. And also, I read these a couple of days ago. So the, the first couple I won't be exactly fully fleshed out on. But we'll, we'll run with it. So... I actually hadn't noticed that Tilda's personality had really changed much, but apparently it has. Um, so, I guess I'm dumb. But, it's obviously, uh, Saha's death is going to have affected her a lot, given what we find out in uh, the flashback within this flashback. But then, with what we find out at the end... So sad, man. Lutz is such a good guy. Lutz, you're the boy. I do really like them. the the Syro siblings are they're just so they're just peak. They're so good. This has made Lutz just even better, man. Like, god damn it, god damn it. I feel so bad for him though. Like, ah, gaze. A lot of the all of these hit you in the feels. You can't see him tapping my, my heart there. Um, he's hit you in the feels. And yeah, this one set the tone, I think, for the coming special chapters quite well. Right, next up. Conditions for affection. This one was actually really wholesome. Again, on the themes of romance, which is, you know, what Kubera is, obviously. It's, uh, it's a romance. Um, more than anything, of course. So, you know, this was really funny. It was wholesome. We got a little tidbit on, um, you know, I don't know if it was all halves or just Yaksha halves being attracted to parts that look like Yaksha Sura, um, which ends in the funny thing of, because the item that Rana has to wear to stay young is fucking cat ears, man. I knew it was, we were told it was embarrassing to wear, but oh my god, I wasn't thinking it would be that bad, Jesus. He just has to wear it all the time. That's, um, oh god. Ugh. Sorry, because, um, I don't have Wi-Fi where I live, my phone acts as my Wi-Fi because I have unlimited data, so I have to tether my phone to my computer by cable. And if I move my phone too much, it, uh, disconnects, and then I lose Wi-Fi, which is sad. Not that I'll affect the video. However, it does normally cause my PC to freak the fuck out when it happens. So, you know, that'll be something that might happen. Anyway, enough tangents. Maybe. Um, there'll probably be more. Hold on. I just gotta sort this out and pray that my PC reconnects. To the, reconnects. To, there we are. It's reconnected. Fantastic. I'll try and not move my phone. I'll just have to look more aggressively downward than I was with lifting my phone. Oh my god. PC! There might have been some weird choppy frame rate issues there. Um, that is because my PC decided to freak out, as I said it would. Anyway, conditions of affection. This was really wholesome. It was really cute. It basically... It, the way I've put it is it adds even more weight to Ran and Rana's relationship than we already had. Like, it's just, it's really sweet. It it fits nicely. It, oh, it's just wholesome. And again, poor Lutz, man. Poor Lutz. Because even he's in this. Right. Now, the first, like, arc, if you will. I love you. I love you not. Two chapters, this one. And I kind of... As soon as we saw guy with red eyes show up, I was like, oh, this is a, um, 
previous interaction between a past life of Briliths and Agni. And so I was expecting quite a lot. And we did get like this really nice, wholesome, but kind of tragic in a sense, um, interaction between this past Brilith and Agni. And then we just skip the like, what, 40 years that Agni had? But then with the way it's framed at the end, it's almost implied that it wasn't Brilith or one of her past incarnations, it wasn't her soul based on what, um, I think it's Yama says to Agni at the end. But then, maybe it actually is, because Agni says something offhand that kind of implies that that might also, that it might have been. So that was, that was an interesting one. Either that, or maybe instead of it being, really, it could have been the cursed child, perhaps, but then that, you know, who, who knows? That's just ran, that was a last minute, that literally had to come up with that on the spot, so that might not be right at all. But yeah. The whole thing that goes on in this mystery in the Rama star system, it, 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 they get in the Staff of Agni, which is interesting. We get to see that being found. I don't know how it goes from random planet to, you know, the captain, Nameless 52, I think it was, and guy that is Agni, end up on to Wolverav. Wolverave. I've always said Wolverave. It's, it's probably Wolverave because there's no E at the end. It only clocked when I watched Haku's. Um, <laughs> a fucking character tier list. I'm probably going to do a tier list for Gamera at some point soon, so keep that in mind. I don't know whether I'll do an arcs tier list like Naya did or a character tier list. I'm probably going to do both eventually, but a character tier list will be a bit difficult because I'm in the middle of season three. Well, I'm going to mount into season three and I can't really view review season two in one character in a vacuum, but we'll do something. We'll do something. I'll, I'll figure it out. But yeah, this was nice. I love you. I love you not. It had this interesting atmosphere around it that I think... Again, it, it sets the tone for what comes at the end of these special chapters. Uh, I, I mentioned it at the game, but Wish. Um, I, th I think it sets the tone very well, and I, I enjoyed it. It was really nice. But yeah, um, people suck as well. You know, the how they were going to screw over Nameless 52 just to get the staff of Agni to be powerful. Despicable. But then obviously Agni comes in and fucks them all up. I guess maybe calling Agni nice isn't correct, but you know what I mean. Right, moving on to Water's Shadow. This one was interesting. I don't think it's going to matter too much unless um, Avasi um, comes up later again. I don't think they've been involved in the story so far, but I might be misremembering again. It's been, it's been waiting for a good little while now, so you know, we, 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 we will forget things. Um, unless Avasi shows up again, this isn't going to really be relevant, but Avasi was obsessed with Manaka. Um, I don't even know if it'd be in a romantic sense, or well, at least not in a sexual attraction like some other uh, Sura in this flashback, as um, Avasi puts them, those with nothing but impure thoughts, or at least something along those lines. It's, um, he's interesting, like, he is very very obsessed with Avas with um, Manaka, and clearly isn't too pleased, but is at least accepting of the fact that Manaka is with Godhava, at least by the end of it, until her death, at the very least. Although, it seems like he has some affection for Shakantala, although tragic, though that may be. I wrote something here, hold on. Yeah, I feel, I've written I feel like this one might matter going forward, uh, but it really all depends on whether Avasi shows up at any point. Um, yeah, this one, I really enjoyed it, but it, it left me with a weird feeling. I, I, I don't quite know how to describe it, but again, I think all of these are really setting the tone and really building up into Wish. That's kind of the feeling I've gotten there looking back on them all. Um, but we'll see. Was this one really called News? I've, I've titled this one News. I, I think it was called News. I don't remember. <laughs> the news feels weird, but I guess News. Um, right. So. Vasuki. We haven't seen you since a flashback in season one. I forgot you existed. And Manasvin, we haven't seen since uh, a flashback in season two. Um, so they're here. And also we get the, um, Sagara's gang in the past. Um, what? 
Riagara, Pingara, Cloche, Clof, Younger, of course. Stage 2 Clof as well, although he develops by the end of it because of events that take place. Quite tragic on the whole. You know, Cloche had this nice place in the human, human realm. And then bad thing happens. A lot of people die and Cloche develop. Cloche, Cloche develops because of it. it. Yeah. I mean, it's... Um, also, we get to see um, Vasuki's feelings for Riagara as well, which is interesting. And Riagara's um, affection toward Vasuki. You can see OBS being weird because I've got it open in front of me. It's doing weird things every now and then. I don't know if that'll pop up on camera. On camera? In video. We'll see. Mm. But yeah. I like Riagara quite a bit more after this. I never had like a particularly strong opinion of Riagara. I like them. Um, I don't think there's any characters in Kamara I dislike, but this has given me a a sudden strange appreciation for Riagara. This was really, really good on the whole. Right. Ideals. Maruna's past. A flashback for Maruna. Or as I put, ooh, Maruna's past. Uh, it's not really much. It's just, you know, when he's a little kid, um, they're harassing a um, Yaksha Umpani. Um... And then it, you know, rampages, and then some more Rakshasa shop, being uh, Akasha's kids, including some Fati. And they, you know, get the Umpani to leave them alone. I think it was a Rak. Uh, did I say a Rakshasa Umpani? A Yaksha Umpani. An elephant looking one. Interesting that we got uh, two elephants in um, these special chapters. Hmm. Funny that. But yeah, and we also get to see um, Maruna's mother. But more importantly, we get to see the first time that Maruna and Samfati quote unquote meet. And it seems like they both have a little bit of a bit of affection toward each other, just from this small meeting. Samfati likes the fact that Maruna isn't like Vi isn't like um not Vayu, Vayu's a god. Isn't like Garuda. And Maruna seems to just, well, also like the fact that Sanfati acted out and got the rest of her siblings to stop attacking Atsura. Despite him saying it's because she's pretty, she is, um, it, that's probably what it is. He wants to thank her for that. And it's really interesting to see this as like the root of their relationship. And Sanfati seems a lot, you know, kinder, a lot less callous than post-development to her fifth stage, given we know that it wasn't natural. Um, I think she used the eye of punishment, didn't she? Or am I misremembering? I might be misremembering. But yeah, this was really sweet. This was really nice. And right at the end, even though it was only a, a brief bit, we got a little bit of Conchess stuff, but nothing important. But hey, that was cool. South Pole Expedition. Bro, this is just the Sierra slander mini arc, isn't it? Like, Jesus Christ, poor guy getting bashed left, right, and center. Um, you're getting overworked so much, he is physically aged about 50 years, as I've put. Um, Chandra, of course, exercising his godly privilege to its fullest by going, you will do what I want, or you can come and tell me to fuck off yourself, if you got the balls, which, um, which Tilda does. Tilda actually just tells him to fuck off and doesn't go on either the South Pole or the um, other place that was 90, minus 90 degrees. Like, the fuck? She just does that. Okay, fair. Yeah, they're going to get shards. And then we go to the South Pole with Sierra. Um, Lutz. Uh, it's that one Sierra, um, the God have a half. I can't remember her name. The bitchy one that's um, with... Uh, The cat girl. Pa. The one with Pa. I, I can't remember the God Have a Half's name. I'm very sorry. Uh, no, it's not coming to me. It's not coming to me at all. And who else is there? It's also Roosh. Yes, Roosh as well. So those four. And um, they're all there. And it goes through all of them, what they contribute to the team. And then there's just 
fucking Sierra. He's like, Lila gave him earmuffs because she felt bad. Like, can man not, can man not do anything? Is he just useless? Is he like, why is he even here? Why has Chandra picked him for these expeditions? He's just actually not able to contribute. Like his entire purpose is to have these earmuffs and scarf so that Agni can get here and then have a failsafe if anything goes wrong when Agni gets there. It, poor guy, man. Poor Sierra. Also, those earmuffs, bro, they're, they're funny as anything, man. Like, uh, these were good. These were good. Oh, there was also um, the thing between uh, Mirha and Ran as well. I just had to check my notes real quick. Sorry. Um, oh my god, that was funny. Uh, they come back from their expedition, and Ran carries, like, Princess carries Mirha back. And he says, fucking, all other women look like manatees to me. It's like, a, f a fucking manatee? B bruh? Jesus! And obviously, Mirha does not take that well. Um, being. Quote unquote, the number one idol of the planet. Don't know how true that is, but I can believe it. Um, damn, Ran. Damn. Also, just a quick comment regular ass elephants exist. And also, Ran's comment implies that regular ass manatee exist. Neat, I suppose. Um, there's that. Also, again, another elephant, Yaksha. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, they're probably not the same. Uh, most likely. But yeah. And just to round this one off. And thus, Sierra's pride was shattered. Right. Two more to go. Two more sets. We have Hide and Seek. So we get a bit more about Ash's village. Through the eyes of this random half your blood, Sura. Not really quite... They're definitely not pure-blooded because they look human. So I think they're just a half. But, yeah. They were born from a pure-blood and a half. So I don't actually know what that makes them. Because a half and a pure-blooded human is a quarter. Would a pure-blooded Sura and a half be... I don't know. At least I think that's what it was. I might have misread it. But hey, here's what it is. But yeah... This one is interesting. We have to see a little bit of Asha when she's a child. And she's still weird as anything. She's sitting there reading a topology book in a cave just to avoid socializing because she doesn't like the other kids because they ask unnecessary questions, as she puts it. Asha, they're children. You're the weird one. Um, and then Asha leaves. This kid's sad because they don't have any friends because they're hated here among, among the villagers. And then Asha's mother dies, and we get to the point where we got the Asha flashback in season two. And then I'd forgotten about how that village was attacked by Maruna. And oh no, they all die. This one was just tragic. This one was just really sad. There's not much to it, it's just really, really sad. We get to see a bit of Asha being nice, I suppose, to this, um, this kid. But. Yeah, it, 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 it seems like Asha actually had a friend at some point. Despite what you may be led to believe by her entire personality. But yes, now, finally. Wish. I picked up my phone because I've got a lot of notes for this one and it disconnected it from my PC. God fucking damn it. Ugh. Oh well. Unimportant, unimportant. I'll sort it all out in a bit. Oh, I can see the, the video getting choppy. God damn it. Right. Wish. This one... This was fucked, man. So I tweeted out. Wish was incredible. I'll let you all know now. Wish is unbelievably good, right? I don't know how Corrigan did it. With three chapters, they've made such a compelling, brilliant little micro-story but it's, it, it's actually heartbreaking. Wish was genuinely heartbreaking, in my opinion. Like, it... Oh my god, it was so good. Let's just work through it, shall we? So Lee's daydreaming at the very beginning, you know, before Vayu wakes her up. Um, it, it, you know, dream about what could have been if she'd 
<clears throat> you know, gone with Ran that day. But as she puts it, Asha knew she'd never be able to make a choice like that. And even if she did, she likely would have killed either her or Ran. So, perhaps for the best or for the worst overall that she did what she did. Also, we finally get a brief look into what happened during the seven years um, that these was in the Sura Realm. Something I've been really wanting to see um, this, since we heard about it. So even if we're only getting a tidbit, it's still nice. <clears throat> and yeah, we knew Lise was putting herself through the ringer, dying over and over and over and over again. But Jesus, putting it, like, having it reiterated and just, ah, it, it ain't good, man. And like, even without, even with Vayu around, although as we find out at the end of these three chapters, Vayu's not exactly Lise's ally. Um, as it was initially made out to be. <clears throat> or at least... Um, no, he's definitely not even remotely helping her. He is simply using her for his own ends. <clears throat> Although, Iravata, not the original, the one with her name, <clears throat> uh, got a right, flo right flog in my throat. No, my throat isn't being flogged. I got a frog in my throat. Bloody hell. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not going to bother cutting that out. You can just listen to that. Sorry, you can just skip ahead. It'll just be there. But yeah. Um, yeah, Bayou. You're not a great guy. And the fact that you'll probably be turning up in the story soon, if either um, Mirha or um, Roosh can summon you. Mm. Yes. And dream time because of Irivata's transcendental so, this dream, I think on the whole it's fucked up. Because, you know, I, oh god, so Yuta being human, even though, as we find out, they both want this, it feels cruel to me. Because I feel like Yuta being human, you're becoming human, just kind of denies everything about what brought Yuta and Lee's together and has kept them together and who Yuta is. Being a Sura is fundamentally a part of who he is and he would not be who he was were it not for that. And Lee's and Yuta never would have met had Yuta been human. It's just, it feels kind of cruel to deny what Yuta is. I know it's, you know, messed up their relationship given Yuta is a Sura, but It feels, you know, it just, ah, something ain't right about the fact that they both wish for something that would just have denied their relationship even being possible. It's cruel. It's really cruel. And, yeah, overall, the, the little dream sequence we get before the snap back to reality, oh, there goes gravity. Um, sorry, that was terrible. It's really, really sweet. It's so wholesome. It's so unbelievably cute. Like, ah, oh, it's just so sweet. What the fuck? You can't do this. And then it all gets taken away. Um, yeah. As, um, Lee's becomes self-aware within the dream pretty damn quickly with only having a few things said. And Yuta kind of regrets, you know, things he, the things he said to wake her, if you will. And then... Well, Lee's accepts that it's not real. And what she says is just brilliant. Denying the dream because she doesn't want to live something that's fake uh, along those lines and you know, have you to suffer. It's, it's fantastic. But and the fact that right after this of them, you know, saying what they say to each other at the end of that dream. And then you to pulling that go away, I don't want you around, I don't love you, is so fucking cruel, man. This shit, like, Wish genuinely broke my heart. <clears throat> like, it was, oh, it was so good, and it was so sad at the same time, like, I don't have words. The entire time reading the last chapter of Wish was just, oh, 
it was genuinely hard to read. Not because it was bad, but because it was like it hurt to read emotionally. Like, oh my god, it was so good. Again, I have no idea how Curry Gone does it. She is unreal, unbelievable. These bonus chapters, these special chapters, were fantastic. Like, genuinely so. Unbelievably good. And we'll leave that there. Let me know your thoughts on them in the comments below. And we'll get into The Weight of Time later this week. Out of the way, I've been Animosity. You've been you. And I hope to catch you all next time for another video. A ta-ta. Bye now.